In my earlier account, Theophilus, I dealt with everything that Jesus had done and his heart from the beginning until the day he was taken up, after he had given instructions through the Holy Spirit to the apostles he had chosen. After the passion, Jesus appeared alive to the, alive to the apostles, confirmed through many convincing proofs over the course of 40 days and spoke to them about the reign of God. On one occasion, Jesus told them not to leave Jerusalem. Wait, rather, for what God has promised, of which you have heard me speak, Jesus said. John baptized with water, but within a few days, you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. While meeting together, they asked, has the time come, Rabbi? Are you going to restore sovereignty to Israel? Jesus replied, It is not for you to know times or dates that Abba God has decided. You will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. Then you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, throughout Judea and Samaria, and even to the ends of the earth. Having said this, Jesus was lifted up in a cloud before their eyes and taken from their sight. They were still gazing up into the heavens when two messengers dressed in white stood before them and said, you Galileans, why are you standing here looking at the skies? They asked, Jesus has been taken from you. The same Jesus will return in the same way you watched him go into heaven. Santa Salvadoria, Santa Palabra. Good morning. Good morning. Um, two weeks ago, if you were here, I believe it was a Holy Play Sunday, one of the Sundays that we um, sent our children and play in our service. And if you happen to be here, you might have noticed um, that my child, who is here, um, did not want me to be a pastor that day. Um, which he, he asked me to sit next to him, as he actually did today as well. Um, but he was sitting way back there then. And we are in the Holy Play, we all gather, many of the children gather in the center on the, on the um, ground. So, of course, I, I couldn't sit next to him. Um, he just wanted me to be his mom, and I couldn't do that. Um, yeah, he got really upset. Maybe you saw him hitting me. That happens. That's okay. Um, and Brian, my partner, had to pick him up and carry him out, and there was there were a lot of tears, and um, and there were tears later too. I can tell you, of my tears. Um, so lately, um, Connell, my son, has been telling me that he doesn't want me to be a pastor anymore. Um, in fact, just two days ago, he told me he was going to take away my pastor job and he was going to give it to Jane. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Jane. I actually haven't, I haven't seen it since he said that. <laughs> um, he doesn't need to know. He's not. <laughs> um, I asked Connell last night if I could share all of this with you. I and mean, let me reassure you, if he's not here, I wouldn't be so explicit about this if he were, but don't worry. I'm not, I, feel, I, feel, I still feel called to this. <laughs> and um, he said, yes, I could share these feelings that he's having with you. Um, and the reason that I'm sharing them today is because um, it's Mother's Day. <laughs> And Mother's Day, um, it kind of can be sometimes a big day in church, and it's pretty complicated. It feels complicated um, for me specifically in this role in some ways, um, but it feels complicated in a lot of ways, um, and not just for me, of course. Um, so I'm going to name a couple of ways in which I see some complexities that I want to bring into the room today. Um, 
this morning, I want to bring into the room um, parents who are not mothers and parents who are not fathers, but also love their children in ways that are hard and amazing and complex and complicated and beautiful and overwhelming and who also deserve love and gratitude, but who have no day, no day dedicated to the kind of parent that they are. Maybe an auntie, maybe a caretaker, maybe a grandparent, maybe a parent who doesn't identify as a mother or a father. I wanna bring parents into the room. I wanna bring into the room mothers who have lost their babies, and babies who have lost their mothers. And there's a wide spectrum in between all of that too. The ways that we wish we parented differently or mothered differently, the ways in which we wish our parents and our mothers parented and mothered differently. We bring into this room the mothers in Gaza. We bring into this room the mothers in the Congo, in Ukraine, in Haiti, in Sudan. We bring into this room our Mother Earth. Are there other ways of mothering? Other mothers? that actually you might feel brave enough to say right now that you'd like to bring into this room and me. I welcome you to say it. Let's break the third wall if you want. Women who want to be mothers. Yes. Women who wanted to be mothers, but couldn't. Teacher, when will you restore the kingdom? Can you see if that's the exact words in this translation? Oops, my translation's over there. So I'm just going to go with that. <laughs> Today's story in Acts, the beginning of which is, um, it's essentially, this is Acts is the sequel to the Gospel of Luke. It's the same author written to the same community. It's volume two. Acts tells us what happened after Jesus ascends. So our reading is the very first chapter, the very first verses. Addressed to Theophilus, dear Theophilus. It's the very beginning of a letter. This is the, it's, what is it? The beginning of the end kind of story. Only it's still going. Christians talk a lot about the crucifixion and the resurrection. These are kind of um, a little bit easier maybe for us to, a little more concrete. Um, but the ascension feels more like a uh, like fiat, an afterthought. But our story today takes place just before and as Jesus is leaving the disciples. And they know that he's about to go. And they're like, uh, wait a minute, <laughs> this is not what I expected. Teacher, when will you restore the kingdom? We thought you were here to change the conditions of empire. We marched with you in Jerusalem on Palm Sunday. We heard you preach radical love in the face of violence and terror. We saw you heal people, not just their bodies, but their spirits, not just their spirits, but their communities. We saw you feed people. We saw you turn two fish and five loaves of bread into a feast for everyone who was hungry. Didn't you come to restore the kingdom? Didn't you come to free us? Um, yeah, on days like today, with things happening in the world as they are happening, I relate to this. How long, oh God? How long? Do we need to wait? Why on a day that is intended to be dedicated to this beautiful kind of love, 
this love between a parent and a child, why do we have to complicate it and with imperfection and paint? And the answer is because that is our experience. Because right here in this room, I'd be willing to wager that not one of us has a relationship to mothering that feels pure. Because we see the pain that comes with mothers and with mothering. We know death, we see death, we see violence and genocide, famine and addiction, and we see the impacts of corrupted power the whole world over. And even mothering can't escape that. Even on Mother's Day, we who mother cannot protect our children from pain or death or oppression or even sometimes our own selves. This morning, Connell told me not to be a pastor. <laughs> Teacher, when are you going to restore the kingdom? Um, we have Jesus' answer, by the way, in the text. Uh, he says, it's not for you to know. <laughs> Too bad. <laughs> he says, you'll receive power when the Holy Spirit comes. And then he's just lifted up by a cloud away into heaven. And, and that's that. Kind of uh, the CML team, we met on Tuesday and we talked about this text. And this felt like the most perplexing part. Like Jesus is just like, oh, what? You know, he's just like in the clouds and we're just looking, you know. Ooh, little preview for Pentecost. Oh, cool. There's streamers. I love it. Thanks for showing me. Are you going to make more? Okay, great. <laughs> so the disciples are just staring into the clouds like, now what? And sometimes it's hard to know what to do next. Sometimes we can feel so overwhelmed by all that's happening in the world that, at least for me, sometimes I can freeze. Um, also this morning, I uh, was reading an email from Pastor Robin Perkwig. Some of the folks in the room know Robin. And um, she sent out an email to several other pastors and probably other folks too, I didn't see who was all on it. Um, and it was with information about, um, what is it? Uh, I forget. Something 2025, Project 2025, maybe. And um, it's about not just the risk of, but the actual plan for authoritarianism, authoritarian government that is planned by Donald Trump and his allies if he is to be elected in November. An actual plan for what he will immediately do, what he and his allies would immediately do. Um, to shift the nature of our democracy, as broken as it is, if you were to take office again. And um, I felt overwhelmed. I already feel overwhelmed by all that's happening in the world. The wars, the famines, climate crises, and all the little, the little, right? The big little crises that happen in each of our lives every day the stripping of bodily autonomy from women, trans and non-binary people. I'm sure we could basically just stay here all day long and keep adding to the list. Each of you has another thing on your heart right now. And it's overwhelming. So much is falling apart. 
And sometimes I feel like the disciple is just staring up at the clouds like, oh, that's what? <laughs> Wondering when someone is going to come and save me. So, no, we don't talk much about the ascension as Christians. And I think it's a little bit like it's a kind of a tougher pill to swallow. Um, the crucifixion and the resurrection are more concrete. It is God taking action in the world that's representative of God's love and God's love for us and for all creation. And the ascension is like, no, nothing. I know you can do it. You can love too. With Jesus' ascension, God is putting the world in our hands. The Holy Spirit will baptize us and then we have the creative power to share the message of love and liberation that Jesus brought. But it's a little tricky. Next Sunday, Pentecost, when we talk about that baptism by fire, when the Holy Spirit comes and anoints all of us to this work. But Jesus' message to us today is wait for the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit will come, but Jesus has already left. It's a little bit of a scary, uncertain place, or it can be. Let's return to the text one more time, though, because when the disciples are staring up at the clouds, wanting Jesus to come back, wondering about the kingdom, here's this other mysterious thing that happens. Two people appear, just right next to them, and they say, hey, why are you looking up at the clouds like that? Jesus is going to come back. And the implication to me is, well, let's get to work. And I don't know, actually, in real time, I'm like, oh, work? Is it work? I want to I wanna dial back this idea of Framing everything as work, right? This is it's about community. This is about liberating love, liberating care, care for one another, care for our ancestors, care for our children and future generations, care for our community, care for our planet. What, when we think about the Holy Spirit, will come and give us power? <clears throat> what is in your power to do? <clears throat> it doesn't have to be big. How do we show up with love in tiny ways every day and trust that this is the act of God in our lives? Each and every day. I think about I was actually just thinking about it. Yeah. I'm giving color my office key. So this pause, this suspension between ascension and Pentecost, and this trust, this knowing of trust, right now it can feel very apocalyptic, right? Feels like everything is falling apart. And I, I guess what I feel called to remind all of us of, because I need this reminder today, is that apocalypse isn't about falling apart. Apocalypse, the, the translation is to unveil to reveal. As things fall apart or change and feel as if they are falling apart, what is being revealed to us is truth. Is the truth of what is. And we can see more clearly. And because we can see more clearly, 
we can trust more fully in the deep and liberating and resurrecting love that we now wait for us. Not just wait for us, is here with us now. So I want to leave actually a little bit of uncertainty at the end of this sermon because we are between ascension and Pentecost. And as we split into one-to-ones today, as um, we do in this community, part of our practice is to go beyond day-to-day, -day, how are we doing, how is this week, but to turn to one another and have the kinds of conversations that allow us to really know one another in that deep and liberating love kind of way. Mm -hmm. So turn to one another and let's talk about what's being revealed to you as things fall apart or don't in your life. Where is the place where you can show up with love? Where's the place where each of us can show up with love? Okay, thank you.